Beacons in the 10 meter band are pretty much all in a 100 kilohertz slice of the band. 28.2 to 28.3. Those in Australia are mostly in an even narrower slice, only 10 kilohertz wide from 28.26 to 28.27, though there are exceptions. Similar also applies on 6 metres, when many beacons are 50 to 50.1. Even if you have a receiver that is not very selective, there are ways to hear beacons that are close together in frequency. And that can often happen when conditions are good and the band is open in numerous directions. Now you can hear a very strong carrier that's one kilohertz away. That's something that I've got set up as a signal generator just to prove this experiment. So that's the VK4 beacon. And my own carrier is one kilohertz up. As you can hear, it's quite annoying. Now the offending signal is about one kilohertz above and we've been listening in upper sideband. The trick is to switch to lower sideband and the offending signal goes away completely. Of course it hasn't really gone away. There it is up here. What we've done is we have zero beat it so you can no longer hear it and the receiver offers excellent attenuation against its signal. That leaves the way clear to be hearing the distant beacon signal. We'll just do the reverse. We'll put the offending signal below rather than above the beacon frequency. We're still in lower sideband and having changed the frequency of the offending signal so that it's lower rather than above the beacon frequency, you can hear that there's problems in receiving the beacon. So we'll just flip to the opposite sideband, find the strong offending signal, zero beat it so you can no longer hear it and the beacon is audible, as if the interfering signal wasn't there. This technique also works for CW, and is why more advanced transceivers allow you to listen on either the upper or lower sideband. You zero beat on the unwanted signal, and assuming that it's anywhere from 500 hertz to one to half kilohertz away from your desired signal, you'll be able to hear the desired signal without interference, as the strong local signal is zero beat. Whereas if you're on the wrong sideband, then you'd hear a high and often very loud tone that interferes with your reception. Getting back to beacon listening, the rule of thumb is that if your desired signal is above your undesired signal, then you use upper sideband to receive, just as you're seeing right now. Whereas if your desired signal is below your undesired signal, then you listen on lower sideband, just as we did successfully before.